So just as I suspected, because of the confined space, it was just foam. <laughs> but we did get a really cool display. Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting video. Today's video is really, really special because I will show you how I make shooting star bath bombs. We have a space theme going on for August's launch, the launch date of which I have not yet fully, fully decided on yet. But the second of the two bath bombs that I'm going to be including in that box are these meteor or shooting star type bath bombs and they are going to be a really cool shape. They're not going to be your typical star shape, they're actually going to be more of a diamond shape and I'm going to be using different molds for this bath bomb. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Jerrica, I'm the owner and creator of Quench which is a soap and bath bomb company and this channel is all about running a company just like that. I give you tons of tips, I tell you how I do it and I show you how I make my products. So if you are on the same journey or just really interested in knowing what that kind of life is like, then subscribe. And now without further ado, let's make some shooting star comet bath bombs. Now to create these shooting star bath bombs, I'm going to be using these hand press molds from Printed Simple. And you can find a link to their shop down in my description below, but they have an amazing shop on Etsy where they sell a lot of bath bomb molds just like this. This particular mold has three parts to it. It has a base, it has the outside, shell part of the mold and it has a top that you use to press down in order to press the mold together. And it's made out of a material called PLA plastic, which is an eco-friendly plant-based and biodegradable plastic. So that is awesome. They were super kind to send me this diamond mold as well as a few other ones to test out for free. And I can't wait to play around with these and show you the types of bath bombs that I make. And a lot of you have been curious about my particular bath bomb recipe, whether or not it's compatible with a hand press because I tend to always use the bath bomb press. I'll be interested as well to see whether or not my recipe can form together with just using a hand press. It should because I used to use two aluminum or stainless steel bath bomb molds and that seemed to work just fine. So it should work too. Color, I'm gonna be using this bath bomb dye from Fizz Fairy and I've used it before as one of the colors uh, of a bath bomb but I've never used it as the entire color of the bath bomb so that'll be super interesting. We're gonna have secret colors on the inside of this diamond. It's gonna be, I think, blue and green and the reason why I'm gonna make it blue and green so that the final resulting bath water hopefully will be a nice uh, green color but we'll see. <laughs> We're also going to finish the bath bomb with some mica drizzle. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to choose, but it's definitely going to be glittery, it's definitely going to be cosmic, and it's going to look absolutely fantastic. And now for the scent of this bath bomb, I'm going to be using Island Escape Fragrances Maisie. And this scent is really, really nice. I really, really like it. It definitely has a more floral note than the other scents that I've been using, which have had a light floral element, but there was also a fruit element in there, but with Maisie, it's tends to lean more so towards mainly floral. And the notes for Maisie are top notes of salty air, sweet citrus breeze, white sea foam, middle notes of coastal lichen, blue water violet, beach daisy, and bottom notes of ocean moss, cliffside rose, and floating driftwood. If you guys remember, I really, really liked Wildflower Breeze from Brambleberry's Bohemian Blooms line. This is very similar to that. So the first step whenever I start a bath bomb batch is to measure out my baking soda. And if the bath bomb is gonna be all one uniform color, that is the point that I will add my bath bomb dye. So I will do that and show you what that looks like after I've added my dry ingredients and my wet ingredients. So that's the color I get in my dry ingredients when I add about one pink scoopful or one quarter teaspoon of the fluorescent yellow bath bomb dye and it initially with just the baking soda it was this really bright highlighter yellow but now that i added my other dry ingredients it's now mellowed out a little bit so i wonder how this is going to evolve when i add the wet ingredients and then my citric into there <laughs> this is also interesting this is so interesting guys i've added my wet ingredients and it's really mellowed out into this now really pale yellow color. This is 
crazy. You can never know the evolution of a bath bomb dye until you see it in all its stages, but this is really cool. I'm really liking this. So we'll see if it'll change color once I add the citric acid. So guys, almost all of the yellow faded away and it's almost white now. And I have to say, I didn't get footage of this at the very beginning when it was just the color with my baking soda, but that was a very vibrant highlighter yellow. And I was actually a little bit concerned because I thought that color might have been way too aggressive for what I was going for. But I'm really glad that it mellowed out into this super light yellow. It's Yeah, it's almost white. So I think it, that will actually suit the shooting star theme more than you know, a very crazy bright yellow wood. So I'm happy with this. Now I'm gonna spritz this with water and then get to pressing. So today's bath bomb in bed colors are gonna be purple, blue, and green. I initially just wanted blue and green, but now I think I'm gonna throw in some purple in there to see how that all comes together. I think I'm liking this color palette here, so that's exciting. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get this little guy to work and I'll show you the results in just a bit. One of these days I'm gonna invest in an overhead setup so you'll be able to see what I'm doing from the top-down perspective. I don't normally like that kind of perspective but I think for things like this it would be super helpful so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I have the mold here. I'm gonna put a bottom piece in and then I'm just gonna fill it up. And once it's up a little bit halfway, I'm going to add my bath bomb colors. In like that, I don't know if you can see. Like that, and then I'm going to top it off with some more bath bomb mix. And I'm going to smooth out the top. And normally I would pat down if I was using my bath bomb press, but I'm not gonna do that with this guy here. And I'm going to put the top on and give this guy a press. All right, so now that I've pressed it, I'm going to push upwards or downwards or whichever way that'll help me release this mold. It's a little tricky to pop it out, but just kind of have to wiggle it around a little bit. And then we're just going to release the top part of it. And then just from using it, I can see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you can see that the top is a little soft. And that's because I didn't do a dome type finish on it like I would do with round bath bombs. And I really should have done that. So I'm going to redo this, I think, and add just a little bit more bath bomb mix at the top so that I'm able to get that top a little bit more crisp so I can get that detail in there. Press down, lift it up, and that definitely helped. And push the rest of the way up, and you can see that it's much smoother now. I'm gonna use the other end to protect that detail on top and see if I can remove the bottom piece. And I can, and that looks beautiful right there. And now I'm going to try to unmold this. And I think because of how it's shaped, I might have it resting on its side because that is the most flat part of this whole bath bomb. So you can see that it is it's a really pretty diamond shape. And it seems to be holding up, resting like that. So let's make a few more and see how this all comes together. I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna get to take some mix. I'm gonna fill it up with my embeds. Now I'm going to fill up the rest of the top. I'm going to leave it like this this time. I'm going to have a bit of extra in the middle because I want that detail of the diamond to be really crisp. I'm going to put this on top and I'm going to press down. And I must admit, this part is kind of tricky, getting it to pop up and out of the casing. It should continue until you get the bottom piece popped up and you can grab it by the bottom piece you're in the clear now we're gonna unmold the top and it's very crisp and very clear i'm gonna mold the bottom and now we're going to unmold it and set it on our trays
So here are the diamond bath bombs that I made and I'm actually going to continue making the bath bombs but instead of this beautiful diamond shape I think I'm going to continue with the balls. These actually ended up being a lot smaller than I thought they were going to be so I'm going to continue making them but in the larger ball shape because I'm really curious to see how this bath bomb performs in a ball type shape. Hopefully these will dry nice and hard tomorrow and we'll still be in this amazing shape. So for those of you guys wondering whether or not my recipe works for the hand press molds like these guys, the answer is absolutely yes, better than I thought they would. I was a little worried about setting them down onto a tray without my handy dandy bath bomb tray that is the shape of the actual bath bomb. I was worried that these guys will collapse into themselves and after about half an hour, they're still very solid. They haven't shown any signs of cracking, so hopefully it will continue to be that way and these will look exactly like this tomorrow. And I will also show you a demo of these guys. A demo of the diamonds and also of the bath bomb rounds. So stick around for that. <laughs> hey guys, it is the next day. Here is how the bath bombs turned out. So you can see these diamond bath bombs turned out really good. They're hard as a rock. It's good to know that my mix does really well with these hand press molds and it's not just a mix that will work with just a bath bomb press because I know that a lot of you that watch me don't own a bath bomb press. So for the question whether or not my mix is compatible with a hand press, yes it is. And here are the balls that turned out as well. Everything is very, very hard. Um, one thing I did notice about the fluorescent yellow green bath bomb dye. Although the part that was exposed to the air is white, the part of the bath bomb that was in the bath bomb tray is still a faint yellow, which is really surprising because like I mentioned before, when I was mixing the fluorescent green yellow dye with the baking soda, just the baking soda, it was a very vibrant yellow, it was so bright, and the fact that it's faded to this almost a white color. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It wasn't what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a little bit more yellow than this, but I will take this. I will take this really white color. <laughs> and in terms of finishing it off, I'm going to paint on a mica drizzle using some eco-friendly pink glitter from Candora. And I'm also going to be using King Tut from Mad Micas and then finishing it off with my favorite Into the Mystic from Mad Micas. I'm like obsessed with this glitter. I'm sorry, it's just, it's amazing. <laughs> so I'll show you guys how I do that right now. So when I'm painting bath bombs, I like to use a really high percentage of alcohol. So for me, I always use 99% isopropyl alcohol. So I just add a little bit in this little candy dish. And then the first color I'm gonna paint on is the gold color that will be Mad Micas King Tut which is a really deep gold color. I love that color, wow. And mica mixing up in alcohol is some of the prettiest footage you can get because it just looks so magical, kind of like a, a potion of, or something. <laughs> we are good to go. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here with the rounds and you can see how I'm just going off to one side with them. I don't like to be too heavy handed when it comes to painting bath bombs and this King Tut mica from Mad Micas is absolutely gorgeous. I have used other gold micas. I actually, it's one of my favorite micas to paint bath bombs with. I've noticed that <laughs> on accident. I'm, I was looking at a few of our bath bombs in our lineup and thinking, wow, I really like the color gold. <laughs> but it's nice to know that there are so many different types available. And I really like this King Tut one from Mad Mike as it has a, a deeper tint to it that I really, really find beautiful. All right, so that is the gold. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make the mica drizzle with the pink and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. So I just realized this because it's a glitter and not a mica, the color of the pink glitter isn't dispersing the way a mica does. So I'm gonna supplement it with 
some peachy pink mica that I bought from Windy Point, and I really like this pink. So without this pink, it was really sheer before, and now we have some body to it, which is good. So that's something to keep in mind if you're wanting to pick a color to paint your bath bombs. Do it with mica and not glitter. <laughs> you can probably add the glitter after. Oh, that's pretty. So we are getting chunks of the glitter with that mica. So you can see how the glitter is quite textured on top. Let's see if a paintbrush can help me even this out a little bit. Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, it's actually not stuck to the bath bomb that well. The glitter is dispersing. So the paintbrush is actually dispersing the glitter. That is interesting. I did not think that that would happen. Okay, it's good to know. I will say that the gold and pink together is so adorable. I really like this color combination a lot for bath bombs. I think it's very chic. And now to finish it off, we are gonna take our biodegradable into the mystic hollow glitter and just lightly tap this on top of the bath bomb and get it onto that still wet paint so that it adheres. Another way to work with glitter and bath bombs is to have it in the mold already. And the reason why I'm adding it now because I wanted this beautiful biodegradable glitter to be on top of the mica paint drizzle. That's why I'm adding it now. And I just think it's the most perfect way to finish these because these look beautiful. I'm really excited about them. So this is how they turned out. They look absolutely beautiful. I'm so happy about these and they smell amazing. But you know that we are not done. We are going to be demoing these guys. I will demo the ball and also the, the diamond shaped bath bomb in some water so you can see how these perform and I'm super excited. <laughs> so I usually have the big wide clear tub to test my bath bombs in but Kale is at the market today and he brought all the tubs with him <laughs> so today I'm gonna be using this really big wide tub it's still big but it's nowhere near as big as my usual setup and a smaller bowl here for the the small diamond bath bombs and that's how I'm going to be showing you the demo today so hopefully it's still cool and I will film it as good as I can so here is a demo of my shooting star bath bomb in the diamond shape Try to figure out girl. 
so that turned out really cool. One of my regrets, and I'm realizing this now, is that the big tub that I usually demo these bath bombs in allow the foam to spread out way more. And because they don't have that room, a lot of the foam is collecting or um, yeah, sitting at the top of the water, which is not allowing the color display to show to its full potential, which is so sad. Because if you see here, it's just all collecting at the top and it's not, usually if it has more space, it'll be spread out. Um, but this is the display that we're getting and it's still really cool. Um, but <laughs> if you are in a large bathtub, this is gonna be way more dramatic and be spread out a lot more. But I'm very pleased with how this diamond bath bomb is performing. It floats and it disperses the color really nicely. And I'm really excited to see how the ball turns out. So it'll be probably much of the same where it's gonna be a lot of the foam that's trapped in the confined space that it's being demoed. My particular recipe is foamier than others. So kind of sad that I don't have the full tub to show you, but this would probably look really cool in a wider space. So next we're demoing one of the round bath bombs. <laughs> So just as I suspected, because of the confined space, it was just foam. <laughs> but we did get a really cool display of foamy colors, which really sucks because I should have actually just waited until Kale came home to demo this, but I got too excited. You can get a glimpse of what that bath art would have looked like had this bath bomb had space to move around and spread its colors out. I think these bath bombs turned out beautiful. I really, really like them. And I'm really excited for you guys to get your hands on these once the space themed launch is actually launched in August sometime. And I will be announcing that date sometime soon. So don't worry. <laughs> I should also mention that the color of the bath water is super pretty. It's like a teal um, lagoony blue. I don't know if it's coming through very well, but it it's just so mesmerizing. For the diamond, I wonder if there was more green in the bath bomb colors in here because this is more of a green teal color more so than this one, but I think the final bath water result is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, and we have a little bit more 
color display coming up here. And yeah, I just really wish we could have had more space to show you, but it does give off galactic vibes to me. Um, I will say that the fluorescent neon yellow didn't really come through, so I don't know if I used the dye wrong or not, but it didn't really make much of an impact. You can see that the highlighter yellow comes through once the water settles a little bit more, like it did for this tub. But yeah, I really like these three colors together, the green, the blue, and the purple. I think the combination is fantastic. Super happy with these. So just a bit of a reminder, I use Printed Simple's Diamond Bath Bomb Mold. And I believe this is the regular size. And this is the size that the bath bomb comes out. And wish I had gotten the large, to be honest with you, because these bath bombs are a little too small. <laughs> but I think if you go up to the large, you might get something closer to this size. The actual mold itself was so easy to use. It does get easier to push the bath bomb out the more you use it. That's the experience that I had. Um, but it popped out really easily and obviously the bath bombs turned out super adorable and the lines are very, very crisp. And if you use my recipe, then you will definitely be able to create bath bombs just like this. We had a high humidity day uh, yesterday and all I had was my Dan B dehumidifier running. So make sure if you're experiencing a lot of humidity right now, which I know in the summer a lot of you guys are, then definitely turn on your dehumidifiers and you should be able to get some pretty solid bath bombs like this. So in conclusion, I highly recommend this company. They have a huge selection of molds and if you want to check them out, the link is down below and I'm super pleased with this. Excited to try more of these hand-pressed type molds because I think that they produce bath bombs just as nice as the bath bomb press if the bath bomb press is out of your budget. This is a really great option for those with smaller budgets. And if you want the recipe, the exact recipe for this guy, you can find it on my Patreon. And that is also linked down below. And on my Patreon, I share my recipes. I also share a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I don't talk about here on YouTube. And there's also a really great community of fellow makers who get to ask me questions and engage with me directly if they want to. So if that is something that you're interested in, you can go check out my link down below. And I especially want to thank my bubble BFFs over here and these guys are amazing. A few of them are also business owners and I have their amazing businesses linked down in my description below. So go check them out. They've made a lot of really amazing things and I'm so proud of them. So that is it. I really hope you like this kind of video. If you did, then give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanna see more from me, then please subscribe. And until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome and keep making beautiful, amazing things like diamond shaped shooting star bath bombs. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Thank you.